Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers hindering, excessive force, and vehicle searches, and is brought to us by ABC News 4's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On August 20th, 2020, Corporal Robert Barano of the Somerville Police Department initiated a traffic stop on 42-year-old grandfather Timmy Miles after he drove away from his Somerville, South Carolina residence. Prior to the stop, Charleston Police police officers had intercepted a FedEx package containing marijuana that was sent to Mr. Miles' home, but addressed to an individual who did not live there, and, according to Mr. Miles, was not known to him or his family. As part of a narcotics surveillance operation, officers from the Somerville PD delivered the package to Mr. Miles' front porch, and at least two officers watched the package from a wooded area behind Mr. Miles' home. At one point, the officers lost sight of the package, and when Mr. Miles drove away, Corporal Barano pulled him over on the mistaken belief Believe that he had picked up the package and put it in his vehicle. Corporal Barano approached the vehicle, and the encounter that followed was captured on body camera. Uh-uh. You just uh-uh. Uh-uh. I know what you picked up. I know what you picked up over there, okay? What I picked up? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, tell tell you. You. Come on. Get out of the car. What, what, no, on. I ain't getting out of the car until y'all tell me what's going on. We're now. about to tell you what's going on. Come on no, out. No, bro. Yeah. What, what, what's going on? I, let me record okay. this. Y'all got y'all. Whoa, whoa, what y'all got y'all yeah, camera on? We're recording right now, so come on out. What's going on? Got the camera on. Yeah, come on out. Come on out. No, no, no. Don't grab me. Don't grab me. Don't grab me. Well, we're telling you, giving you a lawful order. If you don't get out, you're about to get ripped out of the car. Well, go ahead. So don't. I got a back problem. Don't rip me out of the car. I'm not trying to do that, so come on out. Come on out. We'll explain it to you. We're going to tell you, dude. Come on. Step out of the car. If, let me go. No, I'm not letting you go. Bro, let uh, me this go, This is your last bro. chance, man. No. You're... Get the f*** out. Get the f*** out. Get the f*** Why you punch me in my face? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, we're going to pull him up. up in the if you got your camera, punch got, me in my face. We got your camera, bro. Somebody punch me in my face. <laughs> hey, bro. Oh, oh, Johnny, what's going on? What's going on? When Mr. Miles refuses to exit the vehicle without an explanation as to why he was stopped, Corporal Barano grabs him around the neck, pulls him from his vehicle, and strikes him several times in the face. We will explore Corporal Barano's use of force later in this episode, but first, it is necessary to discuss the legality of Mr. Miles' conduct in refusing to exit the vehicle. As we have mentioned previously here on ATA, courts have generally concluded that officers are not constitutionally required to inform citizens about the reasons they have been detained. And although Section 17-13-50 of the South Carolina Code makes it illegal under state law for an officer to, quote, refuse to answer a question relative to the reason for the arrest posed by a person who has been arrested, this statute does not apply to Terry stops. Additionally, officers typically have the discretion to require individuals to exit vehicles during traffic stops. And for this reason, an order to step out of a vehicle is typically considered lawful. While South Carolina's hindering statute, which can be found in Section 16-5-50 of the South Carolina Code is limited to interference with arrests. Under Section 16-1 of the Somerville Code of Ordinances, it is unlawful, quote, for any person to refuse to obey a lawful order of any officer of the police department for the town engaged in the discharge of official duties. However, if he was charged with violating this ordinance, Mr. Miles could attempt to defend himself by arguing that the order to exit the vehicle was not lawful because the underlying traffic stop was not based on reasonable suspicion. Although it is difficult to determine whether Corporal Barano had the reasonable suspicion necessary to detain Mr. Miles without knowing the specific details of what the surveillance officers saw and what they communicated to Corporal Barano, given the fact that the package was still on Mr. Miles' front porch, he would have a legitimate argument that the traffic stop was not supported by reasonable suspicion, and that he accordingly could not be convicted of disobeying a lawful order for refusing to exit the vehicle. Yeah, we have to make sure that if we're not, we don't have anything. They lost sight of the box, and this car left. We stopped it. He didn't want to get out. We had to extract him. It's not there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we got sni- uh, them lookers. Still on the porch. 
It's on the porch still. After Mr. Miles was physically removed from the vehicle, the officers realized that the package was not inside it, and later determined that the package was still on the porch. Despite this, they continue to detain Mr. Miles and keep him in handcuffs. Somebody go to jail for real behind it. Huh? Anybody get it? You want to search it? What? This car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. C continue to research. I mean, we'll get a dog. Get a dog because right now he's going to say no. It's, I mean, we'll, he didn't pick up the package. So let's get a dog to make sure there's probable cause that we search the car. I mean, I already pumped the trunk for safety. Come on, man. I want everybody car. Everybody car. Hey, you brave. You brave cat. With all that shit on, you real brave to be punching on choking people. Man, you wrong. You had no business choking and pulling on me like that. I would have complied only if you'd have let me know what the f was going on. I come out my yard, everybody swarming me and punching me and throwing me on the ground. That's ruthless. That's thuggish. And y'all called us mother. Mr. Miles confronts Corporal Barano about his use of force in choking and punching him, and states that he would have complied with the order to exit the vehicle if the officers would have just told him what was going on. In the 2016 case of Armstrong v. Village of Pinehurst, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over South Carolina, determined that, quote, "...noncompliance with lawful orders justifies some use of force, but the level of justified force varies based on the risks posed by the resistance." Applying this precedent, the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia, which is also in the Fourth Circuit, held in the 2022 case of Nazario v. Gutierrez that, quote, when police lawfully order a driver to exit his vehicle and the driver refuses, police may use reasonable force to remove the driver. In reaching this decision, the court recognized that, quote, a key determination in the reasonableness inquiry is whether the resistance is active or passive, and noted that, quote, verbally refusing to exit a vehicle constituted purely passive resistance. Resistance. Interestingly, we explored the interaction involved in the Nazario case in a previous episode of ATA, and I've included a link to this episode in the description down below if you're interested in learning more. In the present situation, even if a court concluded that Corporal Barano had the legal authority to forcibly remove Mr. Miles from the vehicle, given the entirely passive nature of his resistance, Mr. Miles has a legitimate claim that the type of force employed was excessive and constitutionally unreasonable. In the 2008 case of Cleary v. Green, the U.S. District Court in Maryland, which is also in the Fourth Circuit, held that an officer did not use excessive force in physically removing an individual from a vehicle when she was spun around and slammed against the vehicle several times. However, the court justified this decision by arguing that the officer ceased the use of force once the individual was in handcuffs, and that he did not punch or slap her, implying that such a use of force would be excessive. Additionally, in the 2020 case of Wilson v. Painter, the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia denied qualified immunity to an officer who delivered a single, closed-handed strike to the face of an individual who failed to comply with four orders to exit his vehicle. And in a 2021 case by the same name, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals affirmed the denial. In support of its decision, the district court noted that no more than 15 seconds elapsed between the first command to exit the vehicle and the punch, that the officer blocked the driver from exiting the vehicle by situating himself between the open door of the vehicle and the driver, and that although the driver did not immediately comply with the officer's orders, he did not undertake any threatening or evasive movements. Now, while Corporal Barano waited about 35 seconds before employing force and did not appear to block Mr. Miles' exit from the vehicle, he used more force than Officer Painter did, as he grabbed Mr. Miles by the throat and punched him twice instead of once. And given the fact that Mr. Miles did not resist physically or even make any threatening or evasive movements, he would have a strong argument that Corporal Barano used used constitutionally excessive force against him. Please, then I'm paying my tax if you would. But you, you told me you wanted but to speak. Can I get some medical check with the yes. West Ambulance? Yes, can I get some medical check with the West Ambulance? I got some medical check with the West Ambulance. I got some medical check You know that's wrong. Well, come on, man. Come you know, on. No, you, no, no. You refuse to get out of the car. Refuse to get out of the car. I, I went like, oh, oh, this man grabbed me first. I said, like, why are you grabbing me? I got a right for my rights now. Come on now. You behind me. I did the right oh, thing. No, I stopped. No. And then you ordered me to get out of the car for what? Yeah, this man you choking me. You're on 1897. You're on people that died over choking me. The good news is that you're alive. You hadn't been to choking me, bruh. For choking me, you're going down. You ain't had to put your hand on my neck. 
seen that series for whatever you looking for, bro. This my this was your know, wind on West Church. Eh? At dog. West Church. I do not want a search on my car. I do not allow a search oh, on my car. No, 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 no. I do not, I do not con conduct a search on my car. You see what you look at? Yeah, they called him. This is what we did with the trunk open, but now. We thought there was a package in there. Who, the driver? Or you guys? We did. It was okay. supposed to be a control delivery. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, if, uh, if we can get that trunk closed for him. I appreciate it. Thank you. Did they notify you about sending emails this, uh, to the traffic stop? Negative, sir. Can we get one for blackmail approximately 30, 35, uh, complaining of head trauma? Nobody notified them, so they're coming out. Oh. They're coming. I confirmed it. They're coming now. Secure his phone. Mm -hmm. So I could um, do a search warrant. Did admit to using marijuana? No, I did. Hey, you know what? Just do the um, instant to arrest. We'll um, hand it over rather than tow it. Uh, this is stuff back behind here with this stuff, but he's got a corner cut and it smells like weed in there, so. Yeah, he has a couple baggies in the front as well. Yeah, yeah I'll get photos of yeah. them. Even though Mr. Miles explicitly and adamantly denied consent to search his vehicle, and the canine unit sniffed the vehicle and did not alert, after Mr. Miles admits to using marijuana for his back problems, the officers thoroughly search his vehicle, including the contents of notebooks, folders, and other containers, and do not find any illegal substances. As we have discussed in previous episodes of ATA, the Supreme Court held in the 1983 case of United States v. Place that a canine sniff does not constitute a quote-unquote search for Fourth Amendment purposes. And in the 2005 case of Illinois v. Caballes, the court determined that, quote, a dog sniff conducted during a lawful traffic stop that reveals no information other than the location of a substance that no individual has any right to possess does not violate the Fourth Amendment. However, the Supreme Court clarified in the 2015 case of Rodriguez v. United States that officers cannot extend a traffic stop beyond the time needed to handle the matter for which the stop was made to conduct a dog sniff without independent, reasonable, articulable suspicion of additional criminal activity. This situation is more complex than the typical traffic stop, as there are serious questions about the legality of the underlying stop and Mr. Miles' apparent arrest. And the issue was further complicated by the fact that the officers failed to request emergency medical services until after the sniff was completed, although they seemed to be waiting for EMS to arrive before taking Mr. Miles into custody when the canine unit arrived. Still, Mr. Miles would potentially have an argument that his roadside seizure was unlawfully extended to allow for the canine to sniff his vehicle. Additionally, while the legal issues surrounding the dog sniff are murky, it is far more likely that the court would determine that the officer's extensive search of Mr. Miles' vehicle violated the Fourth Amendment. Although officers are generally required to obtain a warrant before searching a vehicle, courts have recognized several exceptions to this rule under which warrantless vehicle searches are considered constitutionally reasonable. For instance, as the Supreme Court explained in the 1996 case of Pennsylvania v. LeBron, quote, If a car is readily mobile and probable cause exists to believe it contains contraband, the Fourth Amendment permits police to search the vehicle. Although the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals held in the 2002 case of U.S. v. Sheets that the odor of marijuana gives officers probable cause to search a vehicle, there is no precedent suggesting that a driver's admission to general marijuana use allows officers to search their vehicle. And in this situation, it is likely that a court would conclude that the officers did not have probable cause to search Mr. Miles' vehicle based on his admission to using marijuana, absent 
any evidence tying that use to the vehicle, particularly given the fact that a canine unit had sniffed the vehicle and failed to detect any illegal substances. Other exceptions to the warrant requirement include inventory searches when a vehicle is being impounded and searches incident to arrest, which, as the Supreme Court explained in the 2011 case of Davis v. United States, is limited to situations where, now quoting, the arrestee is within reaching distance of the vehicle during the search, or if the police have reason to believe that the vehicle contains evidence relevant to the crime of arrest. A court would almost certainly conclude that these exceptions did not apply because the vehicle was not being impounded, Mr. Miles was nowhere near the vehicle, and the officers did not appear to have probable cause that any evidence was in the vehicle, having already determined that the package was still on the porch. That medicine bottle right there also belongs to him. I didn't do the trunk yet. Once EMS arrived, Mr. Miles was taken to the hospital by ambulance, and after receiving treatment, he was officially arrested. According to a lawsuit Mr. Miles filed regarding the encounter, he was originally charged with possession with intent to distribute marijuana under South Carolina state law and disobeying a lawful order of police in violation of Section 16-1 of the Somerville Code of Ordinances. But both charges were later dismissed. However, publicly available court records only list the drug charge, which was dismissed on January 19th, 2021. Less than two weeks after the encounter, Corporal Barano was terminated from the Somerville Police Department due to his actions during the stop. According to a so-called separation due to misconduct form completed by department representatives, quote, Corporal Barano can be seen on video striking the defendant in the face twice. And, now quoting again, another detective can be seen grabbing Corporal Barano's arm in what appears to be an attempt to prevent him from delivering more fist strikes to the man's face. The form concluded that, quote, there was no apparent imminent threat or danger to Corporal Barano or to the other officers on scene. And that, now quoting again, Corporal Barano utilizing a closed fist and striking the subject in the face was not justifiable, was not objectively reasonable, and was a violation of department policy and state law. On Friday, October 29, 2021, former Officer Barano was arrested and charged with third-degree assault and battery against Mr. Miles. And on September 1, 2022, Judge Ryan Templeton found him guilty after a bench trial, sentencing him to time served. On August 19, 2022, Mr. Miles filed lawsuits stemming from his encounter with Corporal Barano in both state and federal court. On June 8, 2023, Mr. Miles voluntarily dismissed the state case, likely to continue to pursue his federal case. And as of the date of writing this episode, the federal case is still pending, although the proceedings were temporarily stayed on August 10, 2023, due to unspecified, now quoting, emerging familial medical complications for Mr. Miles' attorney. Overall, Corporal Barano and the other Somerville officers involved in this encounter get an F for using clearly excessive force against a non-violent citizen, moving forward with Mr. Miles' arrest after discovering that they were mistaken about the location of the package of marijuana, and illegally searching his vehicle in an apparent attempt to find any reason to legitimize his treatment. Although Corporal Barano's violent behavior was likely both unconstitutional and criminal, the other officers ignored and thereby implicitly condoned his conduct, or attempted to justify it, with one officer even telling Mr. Miles Miles, quote, the good news is that you're alive. In addition to the egregious use of force against Mr. Miles, the officers continued to detain him in handcuffs after learning that they were mistaken about the basis of the stop. And, despite Mr. Miles' clear denial of consent and the lack of a lawful exception to the warrant requirement, they searched every part of his vehicle for anything that could potentially justify arresting him. When they found nothing illegal, the officers resorted to taking photos of empty plastic bags and a bottle of prescription medication as so-called evidence. On the whole, this encounter shows an alarming lack of integrity on the part of all of the officers involved. And although I applaud Corporal Barano's termination from the Somerville Department, I believe an investigation into the conduct of the other officers who played a role in this incident is warranted. Mr. Miles gets a B plus because although he should have complied with the officer's orders to exit the vehicle and apparently admitted to using marijuana, he adamantly defended his right to refuse consent to a search of his vehicle and passionately exercised his First Amendment rights in confronting Corporal Barano about his conduct, and taking appropriate legal action after the incident. Throughout this encounter, Mr. Miles was the victim of both bizarre circumstances and police misconduct, and I commend him for both communicating his disdain for Corporal Barano's behavior during his arrest and pursuing justice for his inexcusable treatment in the courtroom. 
However, other citizens in a similar situation might benefit from obeying the orders of the officers and invoking the right to silence to help strengthen their case against any unconstitutional or unlawful conduct from the officers. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.